This episode of The Travelling Epicurean was made possible by these sponsors. Michelle here. Welcome to the Traveling Epicurean. I'm back at Dana's. Hi everyone. You probably remember her from Spanakopita about a month ago when we made those really delicious spinach and feta little triangles. Hey. So today Dana is going to share with us her favorite sticky bun recipe out of this world, soft and chewy dough with a pecan caramel like topping, right? Totally. And then we're going to show you how to do a cream cheese glaze on that also. Good. So why don't we show everybody what we're going to need for ingredients to start this. Okay. Okay, Dana, tell us what you got here for ingredients. We have three eggs. Okay. Three quarter cup of buttermilk. Ooh, I like that. Two and a quarter teaspoons of active or instant yeast. It comes in a jar as well, so if you choose to buy a jar, that's your choice. Or you can just get one packet. Or use right? one packet and okay. you'll be fine. A quarter cup of sugar, two cups of flour. It's actually four cups, but I just have another two cups to the side right now. Okay. And six tablespoons of melted cooled butter. And a teaspoon and a quarter of salt. Okay, so we're putting our three eggs in. We're just going to whisk them around briefly. Okay. Get them stirred up. Then we're going to add our yeast. And you know, I like to add the sugar next because yeast is all yes, sugar. Yes, it does. So we'll throw our sugar okay. and our buttermilk and let it mix up so it's well combined and that That's, yeast isn't clumpy. That smells so delicious. I love the smell of yeast. Really? Smell the yeast? Yeah, I don't know if I love the smell of yeast. I do. I love that smell. It's wonderful. So after I got the eggs combined with the milk, yeast, and sugar, okay. I changed the attachment out to the paddle attachment gotcha. so I could mix in the flour. Okay. So now we're going to combine this. Okay. And shoot flour on the camera <laughs> okay. and everywhere else. It'll make us look like we're working hard. <laughs> now we're going to add the rest of the flour, which is another two cups. Okay. And the recipe does call for two and a quarter cups. A quarter cup is left aside for when we roll out the dough. Yeah, so total we're putting four cups in. Two total cups. into the dough is four cups. Exactly. And now we're going to mix it. Oh, the salt. The I, for, I forgot too. about that salt. Okay, yep. that's okay. And we add the butter. The butter. Don't forget the butter. Butter makes everything better. It does. And remember <laughs> that your eggs and your buttermilk should be at room temperature when you're making this dough. Yeah. Okay, this is going to mix for five minutes on medium speed. Okay. So our five minutes is up, and this is how your dough should look. It's not pretty. It looks so we just keep kneading it, and I bring it to a ball. And then we're going to spray the bowl over there? Yes, we are. And we're going to put it in its little home and stick it in the oven to proof. Like or a know. warm spot. Not everybody has a proofing, a proofing oven. Yeah, that's yeah. a really nice feature that you have on that. It is. It's nice. I wish I had that. I do this just because I bring it together. You don't have to. It's just yeah, but it makes it make a pizza beautiful fall there. That's gorgeous. All right, and then you're gonna spray the top of that too, right? Give it a little pat. It feels so nice. It does. It looks beautiful. And then we're gonna cover it with saran plastic, whatever you want to call it. And it's ready to proof for two hours to two and a half hours. All right, <laughs> so now we are making our topping for the sticky buns. Okay. 
it's going on the bottom of the pan, but it becomes topping because you flip you them flip over them when over, they right? come out. Okay. We have six tablespoons of butter. Okay. And we're gonna all put it in a saucepan on medium heat and get it all melted in together. Okay. We have three quarters cup of brown sugar, packed as you can see. Yeah. So now we have our butter, brown sugar, and the a, honey. A third a cup of honey, and three quarter cup of heavy cream. Ooh, I like that. And the heavy cream will probably keep it a little softer, so the, it's not as caramelized. Yeah, sticking to your teeth, sticking to your teeth, kind of. Because it can be a problem. Yes, it can be a problem. And we're just gonna let it melt and get all incorporated. So this is gonna take. And now you have a, some time. a cup and three quarters of toasted pecans. You just toasted them lightly in the oven. I toasted them in the oven and just broke them up with my hands. Okay. So now that everything's melted, we bring it up to a boil. Okay. We're gonna reduce the heat and cook it for four to five minutes. Alright. Well, the timer just went off. It's a little <laughs> lame <laughs> timer, my Santa. That's okay. So, it was, we kept it at a low simmer, right, for yep. about four minutes? Yep. Okay. And it did reduce somewhat. So we're gonna do two pans, one without the nuts, and then one with the nuts, right? Right. Cool. A half a cup out to put with the pecans later. Okay. Because I decided I didn't really want to put the pecans in the bottom of the pan. Gotcha. Now, if this was a 13 by 9, I'd dump the whole thing in, but I'm going to put half of it. Okay, so I like how we have both pans. We'll have the sticky bottom. One's going to have the pecan topping, and then these are going to be more like a cinnamon bun. Yeah. Or cinnamon Michelle wants, buns. <laughs> Michelle wants to put cream cheese Please icing, icing on the top I. of that one. Yeah. This is the fun part. I love getting my hands into the towel. Yeah, so you might want to put some flour down first. One of the flour? Please. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm see you. Anytime. Here's our butter. Take a little space here. into a 16 by 18. You could go thick or thin, it's really a personal preference. Uh, so I don't take out my tape measure or anything like that, but by all means, you just eyeball it. You could. So try to keep it as rectangular as you can. And we want to be checking the bottom to make sure that um, it's not sticking, right? Because that could be a problem if it was sticking to the bottom. Could be. <laughs> Mine onto, I think it looks good. 
And same with the cinnamon. I do it to eye. I just sprinkle it all over. So sprinkle it all over, and then we're going to just smear it with our hands to yeah. smooth it out anyway. Kind of like finger painting. And did you put cinnamon in yours? No, not yet. I okay. put it after. Are oh, you going to sprinkle it on afterwards? Yeah. Tricky. And sometimes you can <laughs> squish it into the butter so it sticks. Yeah. Oh, those cloves are behind you, because the recipe does call for like a quarter teaspoon of cloves. And this is the cloves here? Yeah. But now that's smelling really good. It does smell good. Mm -hmm. Wow, you have a lot of cinnamon. I have a lot. So, all right. so now we're going to start to fold over the edges here. Yep. Give it a roll. Up. Like a nice and we roll. want a tight roll, right? We don't want it loose. Yeah. No. We're just going to go back and forth. All right, so I'm going to cut mine in half. Okay. And I think we decided we we're going to make four. I'm eight. going to do eight we'll out do, of mine. We'll do four less, right? right I'm and taking this one off. off the end. I'm cutting my end off. Yeah. Because I want it to be a little more perfect. Okay. Now, are you going to make these for your restaurant, Dana? Yes, definitely. For the Birdie Cafe? The Birdie Cafe at the Goodwin Golf course in That's Harper, such a cute Connecticut. name. Golf Birdie. I yeah, love it's that. Cute. So looking forward to it. Should be open in the spring when the golf course opens. Whose looks better? No. <laughs> Yours look really pretty. Although that was my dough. <laughs> that was yeah. Okay. Let me grab a centerpiece. So was that your dough? So next we let them sit out at room temperature or in the proofer okay. for another 40 they, minutes until they get nice and puffy. And, and they then don't need be to ready double to in size at this point. We're no. just going to, okay. Because when you see how they grow in the oven, you'll be very surprised. So, well, what I wanted to say before you get going is this is my kid's favorite part is the, uh, <laughs> cream, cheese, <laughs> the cream cheese frosting that gets slathered on top of the cinnamon buns. Right. Any, so any what do we got here for the... Um, well, right now we have two ounces of cream cheese, Okay. a half a teaspoon of vanilla, Great. four tablespoons of butter, we're going to use a teaspoon of lemon juice, and a cup and a quarter of powdered sugar. Very good. So, I'm going to whoop, throw it on the counter first, <laughs> then in the Cuisinart. <laughs> It'll get there eventually. I did clean the counter. <laughs> it was clean. I'm going to put the butter in. Okay. And then I'm going to pulse it around. I like how you're doing the food processor. Nice and easy. Yes, it's very easy. So now we're going to add our powdered sugar. Okay. A cup and a quarter, like I said before. The vanilla. And a teaspoon of lemon juice. I like the teaspoon. It kind of balances it out, right? And a nice little tang. It does give it a nice little so tang. much better. Even pineapple juice works, too, if you were. Ooh, that's nice. If you didn't have lemon juice, that would work. I love pineapple. But then you put in um, a half a tablespoon of, of corn, corn syrup. syrup. And that just helps to make it more pliable, like you See, said. See, look at it. It's nice that's and... That's gorgeous. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right, so we're getting these babies in the oven, right? Right. So we're going in for 30 minutes. Okay. 25 a, to 30. A 350. Yep. Hi, Dana. These are looking so pretty. They look oh, awesome. Oh, and there's the butter. There's the timer. See that? <laughs> and we have them up to about so 180. We're going to let these cool. Now we're going to take them out of the pan. Okay. And we're going to flip them over because it's the only way to really get them out of the pan. All right. Make sure you use gloves. Look. It's that simple. Look at that. You ready? I'm ready. There we go. Wow, look how beautiful those look. They came out absolutely gorgeous. That's a work of art. That's definitely a work of art. We did We're a good great team. job. Okay, so we have two choices here. You can put your cream cheese frosting. Okay. So you just take some, get it on there, swirl it around. It's all a matter of how much you want. You can wait till they cool. It's going to melt, obviously, because yeah, they are so still the cream they are, the, the meltier the more it's frosting melt gets. It. Okay. Or you can take the nuts and the extra glaze we saved yeah. and sprinkle it on and add a little bit of glaze to it so Ooh, the pans like get too. diced and coated. I like that. And it gives you a little bit of variety as well, yeah. right? Yeah, and that way the pecans stay nice and crunchy 
Obviously, they're not lacking in glaze, but Absolutely some people beautiful. love a lot of extra glaze. Yeah. So there's two different options for you. Okay. I cannot wait to have a bite of this. <laughs> I want a bite of that one too. All right. But I'm going right to the center. So good. The center is the decadent part. Mmm. It has all the deliciousness. Oh my goodness. Mmm. -mm. That's delicious. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Deliciousness. My kids will like this one for sure. Although I do like the nuts. I love that cream cheese frosting. I think that lemon is perfect in there. <laughs> this was so much fun. It was Thank a you, great Dana. day. You can find this recipe at thetravelingepicurean.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Michelle here with the Traveling Epicurean. I got a great dip for you today. It's a buffalo chicken dip. It's layered. We bake it in the oven till it's bubbly and then we eat it with tortilla chips or carrots or celery. Unbelievable. You're going to love this and it's so simple to make. And yes, I am getting into the football spirit. Um, it's the beginning of the season, so everyone's pretty excited. I have my eye black and my Patriots colors for my dad. And now I have this amazing dip. I can't wait to show you how to make. So let's get in that kitchen and I'm gonna grab those ingredients. So these are the ingredients for the buffalo chicken dip. We have chicken tenderloins. We have some sliced carrots and celery room temperature Philadelphia cream cheese, some homemade buffalo sauce made with the Red Hots and a half a stick of melted butter. You just whisk it, it blends really nicely. A third of a cup of crumbled blue, a third of a cup of shredded cheddar, and a third of a cup of mozzarella, some tortilla chips, and Frank's Red Hot sauce. And we're gonna get the chicken on the stove and just start to simmer that with some Frank's Red Hot sauce. All right, and so what this buffalo chicken dip is it's a layered dish the first layer is cream cheese it gets all puffy when it's heated the next layer is chicken that we saute in Frank's red hot sauce then we drizzle our homemade buffalo sauce on top of that and then sprinkle three cheeses cheddar mozzarella and crumbled blue we bake it till it's sizzling and bubbling and then we dive in with these tortilla chips or the carrots or celery, it is to die for. You're gonna love this. Let's get over to the stove and we're gonna start making that chicken. So I just put the chicken in the pan with one tablespoon of olive oil, just to coat the pan. And I'm gonna let it saute for about two, three minutes on each side, just to get a little bit golden, just some color. And then I'm gonna flip it over and do another two or three minutes on the other side. And then we're gonna add some Frank hot sauce to this. Just so here we go, it's been about three minutes. I'm just gonna flip it over. So simple, I love this recipe. Couldn't get any easier. I don't wanna be slaving in the kitchen when I have guests over. I love this recipe. All right, so that's gonna be another three minutes on that side. And now I'm just gonna start to sprinkle in some Frank's Red Hot Sauce. You know, it's gonna be about two tablespoons, okay? It doesn't have to be exact. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. We're just gonna let it simmer in that for about two minutes so it thickens up a little bit. And then we're gonna take it off the stove and we're gonna shred it up. You can shred it, you can cut it, whatever makes you happy. And then we're gonna start layering our dip. And I got the oven preheating at 375 right now. Look how beautiful that looks. Oh, and it smells so good. Be careful not to smell too closely because <laughs> that Frank's hot sauce will go right up your nose. All right. 
All right, so look how gorgeous this is. Another two minutes on medium high and that Frank's hot sauce thickened up and I'm just gonna leave it right in the pan here. And then I'm just gonna take two forks and just look how tender that tenderloin meat is. And we didn't cook it for very long, so it didn't get tough on us. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. I love the smell of buffalo sauce. It just reminds me of having wings, yet this is so much easier than making chicken wings. All right, so I'm gonna shred this, and then we're gonna start layering all of these wonderful things. So that was really quick. Eight minutes at the stove to saute that chicken. I got it shredded and I actually switched um, bowls because that oval bowl was a little bit too big and the layer of cream cheese would have been really thin and that would be hard to scoop up with the tortilla chips. So this size is going to be perfect and now I'm going to start to put down our first layer of our dip, which is this cream cheese that's room temperature. It's really important to be room temperature. It just spreads so much easier. So I'm gonna spread this out. So look how nicely this just goes down. And I have my offset spatula, which is really bendy. I love this little thing. I actually have a larger one too, but I seem to always go to this one. And I'm just gonna try and make a little bit even doesn't have to be perfect, it's all layered. And what I love about the cream cheese is it just, it puffs when it's, when it's heated. So it's gonna be light and creamy, not heavy at all. And then all the flavors of the buffalo sauce just make this so amazing. It will be the first dip um, at your party that will be, that will disappear for sure. All right, so we have our cream cheese there. Now I'm gonna to start to sprinkle in our chicken here, just like that. You know, I've seen a lot of crock pot buffalo chicken recipes, but they end up putting everything in the crock pot eventually after having the chicken in there for over an hour. And then they stir it all in, it ends up being this big soup. Um, I don't know, I, I seem to like this better having it layered instead of, uh, instead of soupy. And, and it's less messy as well because if you spill that sauce on you, it might be difficult to get out of your clothes or out of your rug. <laughs> so I find this is less messy. All right, so we've got our chicken and then I'm gonna drizzle our homemade buffalo sauce that we made. This is so easy to make. A half a, a stick of butter, I melted it, and then I, you can add anywhere from a quarter cup to a half a cup. I take the middle road and I go a third of a cup, and then I whisk it, and it combines really, really easily. All right, I'm going to start to drizzle this in there, just like this. And this also gives it a little extra flavor and juice. To, um, to back up against that fluffy cream cheese. I got this recipe from a couple of friends of mine, Lisa and Vin. This came from their kitchen. This was Lisa's layered dip. And um, I loved it so much. I thought it would be perfect to show you for your football parties because I know you're really gonna like this a lot. And around the, the uh, middle of November, we're going to their kitchen and Vin's gonna show us how to make his father's homemade pasta. So we're gonna have an afternoon over there. It's gonna be so much fun. So you need to look out for that one, okay? All right, so back to the buffalo dip. We got that all there. I'm gonna do the crumbled blue cheese next. I like to get a good blue cheese because I make an awesome homemade blue cheese dressing, which you can get that link right up there. Um, and so, since you only need a third of a cup of this, I, um, I use the rest of it to make that homemade dressing. So you can also do that too. All right, so we got the blue cheese there. And then we're gonna do our cheddar. This is just so delicious. And we'll do our mozzarella. I, I just mix it up a little bit with the fork to fluff it up. Not, you don't have to get crazy. And I use almost all the the buffalo sauce. Let's get this in the oven and we're gonna start baking it till it's all bubbly. 
Oh my goodness. Look at this. It's still sizzling. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is the buffalo chicken dip. Out of this world. I cannot wait to dig that tortilla in there. Can you see it bubbling over there? It's all melted. It smells heavenly. I could smell that wonderful buffalo sauce that we made with the Frank's hot sauce and the butter. Oh my goodness, my mouth is watering. All right, I'm gonna take a couple pictures of this for our thumbnail picture on the show and then we're gonna have a bite of this. Well, this just doesn't seem quite right that we could spend this little time and effort in making this dish and it looks like that. It's absolutely beautiful. I don't even wanna to touch it, but I can't wait to dive in. These flavors are some of my favorite flavors. Mm. Oh my goodness, so delicious. The blue cheese flavors with that homemade buffalo sauce that we made, out of this world. You're gonna love this. Woo! It's a little spicy. I think I need something cold and refreshing right now. Um, you could find this recipe, of course, on my website, thetravelingepicurean.com or my YouTube channel. You're gonna like this one. Have a great weekend. Ciao. This party dip is so amazing. You're gonna be so happy, I think. Layer. Not, you know, sitting in a crock pot for hours becoming this soupy, goopy mess. <laughs> But um, anyway, so I'm just sitting here, blah, 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 blah. And uh, what we, oh, we're gonna go to the kitchen. That's right, we're going to the kitchen and we're gonna pick up those ingredients. Thank you for watching The Traveling Epicurean. A special thanks to 